In this tutorial, I'm going to illustrate the very important difference between an object's position and its global position. On the screen I have a cube and over here a null object which I've chosen to display as a circle for the sake of clarity. I've already dragged the cube into the Expresso editor and I've set up outputs for position, global position, positions X, Y and Z and I've also created five result nodes for us. I'm going to connect the position and the global position to the first two result nodes. And straight away we've come across something really quite confusing because both values are identical. So you could be forgiven for thinking, well, there really isn't any difference between position and global position, is there? And at this point in time, you'd actually be quite right. And the reason for that, if I just bring in a measure and construct here that I've got set up, and we've done something similar to this before with the pump tutorial, the reason they're both the same is because at the moment the cube, if we look over here, is not grouped into the null object. It's not the child of the null. And that's why the two values are the same, because at the moment the cube's position and global position vectors are both taken from the center of the world. That's the point of reference at this moment in time. However, if I group the cube into the null object, the position has changed. Global position remains the same, but the position has changed. And that's because we're now using the parent object, which is the null, as the reference point for the position of the cube. And we can illustrate that if we bring in another measure and construct. And there it is. So we've got 202.448, which is exactly what we've got in the result node. So now you can see that this is the vector value we're returning here. That's the point of reference. And if we plug in our x, y and z axes, get those wired up into our result nodes, we're returning their values relative to the null object as well. So that's that little piece of it explained, hopefully. Now, what I'm going to do next is ungroup the cube from the null object. And then, if I can do it, <laughs> and then select the null. And what I'm going to do next is transfer that to the cube. Just apply that there. So now the cube and the null are occupying exactly the same point in space. Next I'm going to group the cube back into the null. We can see that our position and all our positions x, y and z, they're all zero. Everything has gone back to zero. And now if we move the null object, as you can see the positions, they haven't changed have they? They're exactly the same. No matter where we place the null object, the cube's positions, well, they haven't changed because the cube takes its point of reference from the null and both null and cube are occupying the same point in space. So no matter where you put the null, the cube's positions will always be zero. And that could present you with a big problem if you're working with, for example, the distance node. But before I discuss that, I'd just like to draw your attention to the actual global position and you'll see that that is still changing relative to wherever we place the actual null object, which as you're about to find out is very important. So we'll just return our null object to its original position. And as I was saying, the problem you have when working with the distance node in this situation is that you have no accurate point of reference because the cube's position always reads zero. And that's useless to the distance node because it needs the positions of two objects relative to the center of the world in order to calculate the distance between them, which without being too technical is called triangulation and is used in GPS navigation systems. So if you have a situation where you're working with child objects and you're utilizing the distance node, then you must work with those objects global positions because position in this particular instance is useless. OK, so that's how global position and position are different, and that's why you sometimes need to work with one or the other. I hope that's clarified a few things there and makes life a little bit easier for you. And that just about brings this tutorial to an end, so I'll see you soon on the next one.